Okay, next we will talk about some mathematics in the utility analysis. So basically, we will use some calculus to prove the to represent some properties of the indifference curves. The first one is the negative slope. Okay, so MRS as we have just mentioned. So this is the maximum amount of y you are willing to give up to change of one more unit of x. Okay, while keeping the utility constant. So in mathematical terms, this is equal to dy dx because this is the slope, okay, the slope given u is constant. While, as you know, so in different curve is downward sloping, the slope will be negative. And we put a negative sign here to make the whole expression to be positive. Then we can express in a positive way. It is just for convenience, okay. So why? Why the MRS is ux derived by uy. <coughs> so ux here stands for rang u rang x, the marginal utility of in of having one more x, and uy here is rang u rang y, the increase in utility of having one more y, or the marginal utility of having one more y. Okay, the reason is that okay, assume u is a function of x and y only so if if x increase okay the consumption of x increase utility will increase the by ux and for y you know that utility will also increase the by u y dy dx okay but you know you need to keep the utility constant so the increase in the utility of ux should be equal to the increase in the utility of uy. So to the whole expression, this is ux plus uy dy dx equal to zero. Well, why the utility of y can change because x and y are rela related. Okay, so you need to multiply the dy dx then times the increase in the utility of y. Okay, then by some uh, algebraic manipulation, so you put a negative ux to the right hand side and derive it by uy. Okay, then you find the expressions dy over dx is negative of ux over uy. Then you know that the MRS is negative of dy dx. So this is equal to positive ux derived by positive uy. Okay. So this is called a, this is how you derive the marginal rate of substitutions. So one of the very important properties is that okay the MRS is invariant to a monotonic transformation. Okay, that means if we put the u into the function of f u, okay, the m l s would become rang f rang x derived by rang f rang y. Okay, so this is just f prime u times u x, and the denominator is f prime u times u y, and still you can see that this is still equal to u x over u y. Okay, here it proved that the MRS is not changing with respect to a monotonic transformations. Okay. <coughs> Next, we'll talk about the concept of convexity. So this shows the indifference curve is downward sloping. So to show the indifference curve have, have the shape like this, okay. Not a linear line. So you need to show that the second derivatives is positive. Okay, because the slope is increasing. As you can see, the MRS, say, if the x increased by the same amount from x1 to x2, so this is poorly drawn. 
to x3 okay the give up of y is become smaller and smaller okay so this shows that the slope is decreasing or the negative negative uh, the slope is increasing the negative slope is decreasing okay so this means the slope is increasing so the second derivative is positive so you have two way to show show this the first one is okay so d2y dy square is actually the d of dy dx derived by dx here dy dx here is the d the negative mrs dx okay so you can just show that the mrs dx is negative then it is sufficient to show this result because negative neg mrs is a negative value okay you put <coughs> it's a positive okay so you Puts the negative MLS and you input one more negative, so the whole thing will be reversed. So this is one way. The other way is use the property of quasi quantum. So again, you are expanding the dy, d two y dy dx squared. Okay. Well, actually, so second method d2y dx square given the utility unchanging is actually equal to okay you go back to look at the dy dx definitions so dy dx is the negative of ux derived by uy okay while ux and uy is a function of x and both x and y so here, d2y dy squared would become, okay, the quotient rule, uy times round ux, uh, dux dx minus ux times duy dx derived by set square of the denominator. So this is the basic calculus basic quotient rule okay you differentiate the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the differentiate of the denominator then the denominator square it okay so here the value depends on dux dx and duy dy right so next I'm going to calculate what is the dux dx so this is equal to ux x plus ux y dy dx <coughs> because ux is a function of both x and y your total differentiate will become ux x plus ux y dy dx so this is equal to ux x times ux y okay what is dy dx this is the negative of ux uy okay by the mls definition so dux dx is actually equal to d ux x minus ux y ux derived by u1 okay we finish one the other one is duy dx so this is equal to ux y plus u y y d y d x okay Again, the product rule. U y is a function of both x and y. Okay, here. U x y is equal to u y x. Okay, by the Young's theorem. So this is equal to u x y plus u y y times the negative u x divided by u y. <coughs> so this is equal to u x y minus u y y times ux times divided by ui okay then you can substitute these two values into the expressions of the quotient rule and you will get d2y dy square is equal to negative of ui okay then the dux dx is 
uxx minus uxy times ux divided by uy minus the ux times the duy dx that is uxy minus uy y times ux uy derived by the square of the uxy okay then you expand the expression you will get negative uxx uy square minus ux uy uxy minus the second term ux uy uxy plus uxx uy uh, ux square uy y okay then the denominator is still the same so by taking the common factors this is just equal to uxx uy square minus 2 times ux uy uxy plus uy y ux square derived by uy square okay so if if you, you want to hold the whole term to be positive to show the convexities okay the denominator is always positive this means for the numerator you have to be a negative value right because this negative combined with the negative at, at, in the front then the whole term will be positive so if you know you want to ensure this is positive uxx uy square minus 2 ux uy uxy plus uyy ux square has to be negative okay so uxx here and uyy here in traditional economics we assume they are negative due to the diminishing marginal utility conditions okay but given these two to be negative the square term positive ux uy are the both positive how about uxy we don't know we does not pose any restrictions on whether uxy can be negative or positive okay so if it is very negative then it violates the complexity assumptions so if you want to ensure this condition the uxy has to be greater than uxx uy square plus uyy ux square derived by 2 times ux uy okay so if this condition is violated this does not show the diminishing marginal rates of substitutions okay so here showing that diminishing marginal utility does not imply diminishing marginal rate of substitution directly you need to ensure that uxy satisfies these conditions okay so next will be much more mathematics so next is talking about some usual some condition utility functions so the first one is called perfect substitutes perfect substitute means that both the goods x and y can substitute each other perfectly okay so x and y is the same so the function will be will have the form ax plus by okay if you want to draw in the indifference curves so you can see this is a linear line okay with the slope a over b <coughs> next one is the perfect complement Perfect complement means they have to be used together to satisfy the human wants. Say the left shoes and right shoes. Okay. So in the if you want to draw the indifference curves, this is A O J. Okay. So this is also called Leontief. Leontief utility functions. So the third one is called uh, Cobb Douglas. So Cobb Douglas is very famous. It has, it has a form that utility equal to x to the power a, y to the power b. And in more usual case, it's x raised to the power a and y raised to the power 1 minus a. As a result, the summation of the power is equal to 1. Okay, 
this is special in the sense that this is a special case in the utility functions. So what is the meaning of special case? So let's turn to a general case. For the constant elasticity of substitution utility function, in short CES functions. Okay. So CES function has the form x raised to the power of rho plus y to the power of rho times gamma divided by rho. So gamma is some constant term, it can be any number. Rho has some special meaning. So rho capture the relation of the elasticity of substitution. So this sigma is the elasticity of substitution. That means whether x and y can be substitute each other easily. If this sigma is high, that means x and y can substitute with each other easily. If this sigma is zero, that means both x and y cannot be substituted with each other. Okay. So here you can see that in the case of perfect substitute, so x and y can be substituted by each other easily. So the sigma is equal to infinity, showing that they can be substituted to each other easily. So if this is infinity, what is the rule? Rho will become 1, right? If this 1, then this 1 divided by 0, then the substitution will be equal to infinity. Okay, then you can see that if rho equal to 1, go back here. The utility is actually x plus y times gamma, okay? And it, it can be equal to ax plus by by the monotonic transformations. Monotonic transformation means some positive transformation with the same MRS. Okay. So if they are perfect complement, so the substitution is equal to equal to zero, meaning the row is equal to negative infinity. <coughs> okay. So substitute the row to be negative infinity, and they would become the utility function mean ax and by okay so how to prove it now this is the show time okay so first assume the ces utility function is in the form of ax rho plus 1 minus a y to the power of rho times gamma divided by rho, okay, by some monotonic transformation, turn to this form. And now assume x is smaller than y, just assumption with the laws of generalities, okay. So given x is smaller than y, x to the power of rho will be bigger than y to the power of rho, because rho is now some negative value. <laughs> okay. Then we'll put further restrictions. A x to the power of rho raised to the power of gamma derived by rho is bigger than a x rho plus one minus a times y rho raised to the power of gamma divided by divided by rho. This is our utility functions, and this is smaller than I just take out taken out one expressions because raised to the power negative, it will become smaller, okay? Then it is bigger than x to the power gamma, okay? I don't raise the power of rho, then I can skip the negative portion. So this is equal to a gamma divided by, divided by rho x times gamma is bigger than the a x rho plus one minus a y rho times a uh, raised to the power of gamma divided by rho is bigger than x ga x raised to the power gamma. Okay, then you can see go to the left hand side. The limit of rho goes to infinity of the a this term. So if rho goes to negative infin negative infinity okay then it becomes x to the power gamma 
okay then you can see that the left hand side goes to the limit of x gamma and the right hand side is still x gamma so by the sandwich theorem the limit of rho goes to negative infinity of a x rho plus 1 minus a y raised to the power rho raised to the power gamma over rho is equal to x gamma okay x gamma is less than y gamma therefore this is equal to the minimum of x and y raised to the power gamma okay then by monotonic transformation this is equal to minimum of a x and b y this is the usual leontief utility function form okay finally what if the rule is zero in which the elasticity of substitution is one so this is the remaining special case the substitution can be zero can be positive infinity and can be some constant say one okay so that means the substitution between x and y the percentage change is never changing okay so okay again start from this form of the cs function so first let's take the log of the u and you will get gamma divided by rho times a x raised to the power of rho plus one minus a y raised to the power of rho okay <laughs> then you can see if i put zero to the row it will become okay a x raised to the power row this is equal to one okay a plus one minus a this is one oh i miss a log here then you can see in the numerator log one is zero while in the denominator row is zero so this shows zero divided by zero situations okay therefore we can apply the L'Hopital's rule we take the limit of rho goes to zero so the L'Hopital's rule means that you differentiate the numerator and denominator with respect to the parameter that is considerations to zero okay so what you will get is denominator you take the first order condition with respect to rho is 1 okay so we can ignore it how about the numerator if we take the derivatives with respect to rho we will get 1 over a x raised to the power of rho plus 1 minus a y raised to the power of rho okay times a x raised to the power of rho times log x plus 1 minus a y raised to the power of rho log y so if we put rho to be 0 we will get a x raised to the power of 0 log x plus 1 minus a y raised to the power of 0 log y and for the denominator a x raised to the power of 0 plus 1 minus a y raised to the power of 0 so this is equal to a log x plus 1 minus a log y because any thing raised to the power 0 is 1 okay derived by a plus 1 minus a that is a that, that is 1 okay so this is equal to a log x plus 1 minus a log y then I take the exponential function to the log u and I will get back the u at the end so this is equal to x raised to the power a times y raised to the power 1 minus a okay so these are how you use the mathematics to show the property of indifference curve and various type of utility functions